What's up, guys? I'm Cliff. This is Tech Endeavor. And on this series, we're going to be building a node server. And this is actually this part two of a full stack tutorial. In the first part, we built a React to do app. And in this part, we're going to be actually building the node server so that we can store our to do's in an actual database. And if you haven't seen the React portion, uh, you can click here and go check that out. If you already know React and you just want to get your feet wet with some Node, that's fine. You can just continue along. The endpoints that we're going to be making are um, you're going to be able to use it um, in whatever, whatever application you're using it with. Also, another option, too, is if you don't care about building a front end, you can download an app called Insomnia. There's also another one called Postman, but I'm going to be using Insomnia. Um, and it's essentially a way for you to test out your endpoints without actually having to build a front end. Um, so it's a really good way to make sure that your server is up and running, all your endpoints are, are healthy and, and working properly. So with that being said, let's uh, go ahead and build this server. Okay, so first things first, you want to have Node installed on your computer. Now, if you have NPM already installed, it actually comes with Node. Uh, but for whatever reason you don't have Node, you can go to uh, nodejs.org and you'll see here you can download it. It'll have whatever your operating system is here, most likely. Um, if not, you can go to other downloads and find what you need. Um, but yeah, you want to do the recommended here. Like this is going to be the latest version, but it might have. Uh, you know, they might have some bugs or things that are not worked out yet. So get the recommended one. Um, that's fine. I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to do it. But um, yeah, so if you don't have Node, go ahead and do that. To find out if you have Node on your machine, you can um, open up your terminal. And you can type Node dash dash version. And if you get something here, then you do have it installed. If you don't, then you're going to need to install it. I think if you don't have it, it'll say node command not found or something like that. So yeah, if you don't have it, just go through the process here. It's super easy. And then you want to navigate in your term. I mean, you can do this in your terminal or you can do it through Finder or, you know, the File Explorer on Windows. Um, I like to do it on ter in the terminal, but navigate to where you want this project and we will make your make a directory called uh, to do server. Okay, and we'll move into that. What we want to do first is we want to create an index.js and run npm init, and this will initialize a project for us. This will um, give us a package JSON, .json so we can actually install packages and that kind of thing. Okay, so you can pretty much just you know enter through this, but if you want to change any of it, it's cool. But you know, package name to do server description. I can put a description here if I wanted. I'm not going to, but um, entry point index.js. We want to keep that the same. Test command. We don't have a test command at this point, so we'll just keep going. Um, we don't have a Git repository, um, so we'll keep moving. Keywords, again, here you can put keywords, but we'll just keep going. And you could put your name here if you want. And this all looks good, so we'll type yes, and we're good. Oh. Okay, so then we will open this in VS Code. And we have our package.json and our index.js. We have a couple of dependencies we want to install. We want nodemon. That's going to give us some um, kind of developer tools. We'll get a basically what happens is when you're running your server uh, with the nodemon command, whenever there's a change to one of the files, it automatically restarts the server because otherwise you have to do it manually. So we'll do nodemon. We'll do connects.js, and I'll show you what that what all that means later, but um, we want SQLite 3. 
And obviously we're going to need Express. So that will get us started. Oops, actually this is just connects. So we'll see here, if we go to our package.json, we have these installed. And actually what we want to do is we want to delete this as a dependency and we actually want to install it as a dev dependency. Just to keep everything semantic, you know, put things in its proper place. So we'll give it the save dev flag to save as a dev dependency. And we'll see it there and we're good to go. So before we get too into this, let's say, or let's kind of define what Express is. Express is a minimal and flexible Node.js app web application framework that provides a robust set of features for web and mobile applications. So this is a framework that we're gonna use for Node. It's gonna help us a lot with creating servers and routers and that kind of thing. So we'll go back to our index.js and we can think of our index.js kind of really the same as, uh, or very similar to in our React application. And it's kind of the, the, the entry, you remember it's the entry point, right? So this is what every part of the app is pulled into. The import syntax is a little bit, we're gonna use a little bit different here. We wanna use the old syntax here. Um, so what we'll do is say const express equals require express. So this actually means the exact same thing as import express from express. So to declare an express server, um, what we wanna do is we wanna say const server I mean we can we can call it whatever we want let's call it server though equals express and then to start the server up we'll say server dot listen listen takes callback um, the first argument is the or it takes I'm sorry it takes an, uh, an argument and then a callback right so your first argument is going to be your port okay so we'll just define a port here and then we'll declare what it means just a second here so we'll do a callback and this callback here is really just for us so we can see what is happening okay so we can say server running and so let's define our port so a port really can be just about any string of numbers that we want it to be. And there's only a few that are reserved, like 443 is reserved for HTTPS, 80 is HTTP. So there's a few that are, that are reserved that are used, so you can't use them. But I mean, for the most part, you know, you can use um, whatever you want. Um, you might have remembered from from React, they they use uh, port three thousand. Um, so I like to just use four numbers that are the same, or like you know an even thousand or something. But we'll say eight 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 eight. Okay, and this is going to be running locally. It's going to be running locally on your machine. So it's really just a matter of do you have any other processes that are running on this port? If they do, you're going to run into problems. <laughs> this cat. Oh, this cat is going wild right now. You're going to run into problems with that, but anyway, so we'll save that. And what we can do is go here to our terminal and say, let's start with this, node index.js. So what this says is node, I want you to execute index.js. I want you to run it. So we get our message here that says server running. Then if we navigate to localhost 8888, we'll get this cannot get, which means, strangely enough, actually that it's running. 
if this wasn't running, then the, you would get an error. You get a 404. So then we'll do our first endpoint here, super simple endpoint, and this is just kind of our test, our sanity check, right? And it, you write it like this, server dot get. Okay, so you can define this as whatever operation you want. So this could be get server dot post server dot put, you know, server dot delete, whatever. Um, it takes two, two arguments. The first one is what is the actual endpoint and, you know, like the URL endpoint. And the second is a callback where you get your request and your response objects. So let's do this. This would just be localhost 8888. Then we'll run our callback with our request and our response. And we'll say response.send. Welcome to the to, to do app server. Very exciting. Remember I said you, uh, when we're using NodeMon, we won't have to start the server over every time, but since we're not running it with that, we're going to have to do that manually at this time. Otherwise, you won't be able to see your changes. Okay, there we go. We got Express imported. We got our server initialized. We got our port declared. We have our basic route declared. And then we have our server listening at our port. Last thing, we'll define the host. Now the host is already going to default to localhost, but we're going to define it here anyway. Here, let's make this a little more dynamic. Uh, use backticks to insert a template literal, and we'll say server running at, so to put a variable in here, we do a dollar sign and then open close curly braces, server running at host colon port. We'll save that. Restart. And there we go. Wow.